beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed can we cry for understanding in one minute? Lord, grant me understanding. I've been hearing these truths, but give me understanding. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. Those outside pray. Those following online pray. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and then you sit down i'd like you to prophesy to your destiny and declare the word of the lord declare that your destiny must become that which god has declared in his word go ahead the bible says declare ye that thou mayest be justified don't watch others pray prophesy son of man can this destiny live again and he said prophesy we speak to our destinies in Christ. Decree and declare. No failure, no defeat. A life of total victory, total victory. Absolute victory on all sides in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God tonight, we lift up our eyes to you. You're the only one who can open scripture. We pray that you will open up our eyes. Not just the word, but open our eyes. Give us understanding. In the name of Jesus, grant us grace tonight and let your word bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I saw a very powerful vision this morning. Just woke up from sleep, minding my business. I wasn't even praying, wasn't doing anything. And all of a sudden, I didn't even know I was in a vision. I stepped into a very magnificent auditorium. Very, listen, magnificent auditorium. And when I entered that auditorium, it was like I was outside and I was inside at the same time. And it was like the Lord was causing me to pass through. And I saw many faces here that I know. But the thing was not the auditorium the entire the garments that people were wearing was pure gold pure gold crystal gold listen i was amazed because it's not just the kind of gold that you see pure gold 
I saw people that I knew in the physical were even struggling in my mind. I said, what are these people doing with gold? Pure gold. Nobody was even concerned about the gold. People were just worshipping God. Some were lying down. But I saw pure gold. Listen, immediately I saw that. Then when I returned from that vision, I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? You see, let me tell you. Gold in scripture is associated with glory and royalty and wealth. When God begins to speak like this, it is his revelation about your destiny and what he's determined to do. Now, there is no guarantee that because it was seen, you will get there. Are we together now? Honestly speaking, it was only when I came back to myself that I believed it was a vision. When I, I'm talking of splendor, gold, I understand what the Bible says that silver can become dust. There is a level. I, I, have you seen a level where nobody is a beggar? Nobody is. It's not like somebody competing with another. How much is your rapper? People, and the, I noticed this in the vision. People were not even concerned about, you know, all these things that people think about. It was extreme worship. A magnificent auditorium. Thousands of people. Flags of nations. And people were worshiping. Let me tell you. If the mouth of the Lord declares this, his spirit will make it happen. Yeah. Hmm. We have grown up in environments that have cultured us into believing we will never amount to anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are largely victims of the programmings and the limitations of our environment. So when God utters a word in his majesty, I hope you know that every man speaks according to his ability. If a little boy says, I will buy you a car, you don't say amen. Because you know that the child may have desire, but there's no ability. Before God speaks or shows something, he searches whether he can make it happen. So if at all he declares anything, it's up to us to believe. Can we turn this vision I just saw into a prayer for yourself? And say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have revealed your desire for me. I will step into it. Splendor. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign, and we shall reign. He didn't say we shall struggle and we shall reign and we shall reign. He says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. He said they shall reign. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I began challenging us last week about a mystery that God showed me you see one of the one of the blessings of the apostolic office in fact it's not just a blessing it is also the proof is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality aside from spiritual governance you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and god allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. That if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that God has committed, these two things happen to you. Number one, illumination is granted unto you. Number two, the capacity. It says, as many as received him, even unto them that believed in his name, he gave them the power to become. When you believe it, and you receive it then power is released to become that experience hallelujah 
And so, I have taught us again that in this kingdom, dominion is a product of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. This is what we call the word of God. The word of God is many things, but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of God. Comes from the word logos, the logos of God, the thoughts of a man. Carefully calculated thoughts. An extension of that word, word means the mindset of a man. Are we together now? So when you study the word of God, you are accessing the mindset of God, the wisdom of God. And the Bible says, let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was an understanding, there was a comprehension in the Christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced. And the Bible says that if that mind is in you, it can cause you, regardless of what limitation, to produce that result. Hallelujah. This Bible was given to us as a gift. Holy men, the Bible says, wrote as they were inspired of the Spirit. Now the Bible in itself, theologically speaking, still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters and some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year you see obvious um, limitations things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added but regardless of the limitation the word of god is still intact the word of God is not 66 books. No. 66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of God. Are we together now? If all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the Bible, you can access the word of God through it. It is not just in reading Genesis to Revelations that you access the word of God. That vastness is given as a symbol of God's mercy and grace so that regardless of how you come what angle you come you will still access the word of God you have to understand what I'm saying there are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands yet they can have access to the word of God the word of God is not the reading of the book for there are different alterations to different Bible versions I don't want to go into all those theological debates there are many books that are, are argued whether it should be added to the book or not. And, and people argue as it will, not, it will not change the word of God. The word of God is eternal. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter what error in interpretation. That's too small a reason to alter the word of God. The Bible says the word of God liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. Are we together now? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation, scripture tells us that we are born of the word. Born of the word. Born of the word. But much more than being born of the word, the Holy Spirit, when he comes into the life of a believer, his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of God's word. Jesus was speaking, John 15, John 16. He began to talk to us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you read John 16 and verse 12, it was, it was, it was said that he, when he comes, he will guide us. The Holy Spirit guides you. He is the spirit of truth. But he, he will guide you into all truth. He will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error. Hallelujah. Listen. The quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of God. But not just the word of God alone. I shared it last week. Remember, our access to it first. Then our ability to engage the word. This word of God issue is a very serious issue. Two scriptures all said the same thing. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. We are talking about a life and death issue, brothers and sisters. We are not talking about something that you can live without. He says, and he humbled them. Afterwards, go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what? Man does not live by bread only but by every word. How many? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That means both the quality and the quantity of your life, listen, is dependent on the word of God. When Jesus came, give us Matthew chapter 4, please, and verse 4. Satan was attempting to tempt Jesus and here was his reply. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life. Whether sickness, destiny, career. is The cure is in the mouth, the word of God. The word of God. You hear people talk about the word of God. But many believers have not given the kind of attention. That is required to produce the results they desire. The word of God. Man. So we are talking about an issue of life and death here. That if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of God. He will die both spiritually and physically. The secret to the mysteries of God is in his word. The secret to the multifaceted dimensions of God's possibilities is hidden in his word. The secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God. The secret for restoration, just like the worship team beautifully sang, the word of God. The secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God. But you see, believers pay very little attention to the word of God and there is a reason for that it's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God we preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God we will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them than to stand and access the word of God we will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner it is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything the word of God is reliable the word of God is dependable the word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment please don't forget this the word of God is reliable. The word of God is faithful. It would deliver as promised. If I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch, the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable, whether I am trustable, and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch. So when you think and say lunch, uh, no matter what, you should be able to afford it. Then you believe me. Is that true? Everything, brothers and sisters, declared by the word of God for your destiny is doable by the word. The word of God is not a scam. The word of God is not some fraud, some trickster. The word of God is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity so there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable no the bible says that heaven and earth will pass away listen carefully heaven and earth will pass away it says but the word of god remains eternal i do not trust anything that is not built upon the word 
I don't care how solid it looks. You are watching a mirage. It will evaporate. The vicissitudes of life will force it to move away. Are we together? It says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock. It's, the issue is not the house. The issue is what it was built on. Brothers and sisters, our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions. We are building our life on emotions, building our lives on uncle, connection, degrees, building our lives on, on lottery, building our lives on business, building our lives on money, building our lives on intelligence. That's a risk. It's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed. How safe is that? Yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of God is worse than that. And we do it every day. For some it's been so all their life. My assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of God. My assignment is to indoctrinate you, to bring you to a point where you, are, you become one experientially with the word. That your life is built upon the word. Brothers and sisters, I give you a guarantee you will never fail. I don't want to know what is happening in your life. You will never fail. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, John in his gospel was teaching. He said, in the beginning, when your uncle was not there, listen carefully. When the university was not there, when no business idea was there, when no seminar was there, in the beginning, when there was no customer, in the beginning, where there was no producer, in the beginning, where there was no lecturer, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word is ancient. In the beginning was the word. And the word as a person was with God. And the word himself was God. Verse 2 says, that the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, it says, how many things? Please talk to me, how many things? all things were made by now when the bible tells you all things were made by the word you should pay attention because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word your finances can be made by the word it's not there the word is what will make it the ministry can be made by the word the home can be made by the word in the beginning was the word he said all things were made by him and without him ha, this is a revelation already was not anything made that was made that means if it ever appeared the word of god made it happen this for me is healing from every fear this is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things 
by the word of his power the word of God is a matter of life and death the word of God is not the issue of Christianity the word of God is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of God there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of God it doesn't mean you're a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of God has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word I know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle Peter is teaching us something first Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first Peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which does what liveth and abided forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abided forever the word of god is the only way to commit god to the affairs of your life the word of god is not one of the ways it is the only way an individual a believer can commit god to the affairs of his life you ignore the word of god you will pity yourself and just become emotional believing that god is in the affairs of your life many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of god with our pride and arrogance believing that we can believe we can build our lives many people are building homes without the word of god many people are building financial destinies without the word of god when you talk about the word of god they don't exactly refuse it they just they are passive about it they have not seen how to engage it god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in god please write it down god's word is a compendium god's word is a compendium of all not some all the possibilities that are resident in god god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in god There are many things that the word of God can do. A number of them, not all of them, a number of them were chronicled in this Bible. The 66 books are a representation, just a sample of what God can do. The Bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories. The stories are finite. The power of God is infinite meaning that if the bible were to be written continually there are more things that we will see about god the bible says many miracles jesus did which were not recorded in this scripture but this has been written because it is enough to make us believe hallelujah the bible is a compendium of all the possibilities in this bible impossible situations were turned around in this bible sick people were healed in this bible god took people from the dunghill in this bible farmers became prophets 
in this bible prostitutes became the great grandmothers of jesus in this bible god turned around families in this bible money failed and god turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations in this bible men lost things and received it back in this bible god stepped in miraculously in this bible angels fought for men so that when you see it you can have a, a consolation that the word of god is reliable are we together the word of god is dependable the word of god is trustable you can throw your life to it I believe the word of God with all my heart. I will be foolish today to ever say I do not believe the word of God. But the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of God does not work automatically. Let's walk this thing now. This is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes somehow they believe that if the word of God is powerful and potent it should be able to work regardless of my impute that thing I believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons the Bible says that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons one of it is the misconception of the operation of the word this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the word how the word works hallelujah the word of God does not work automatically. It was Jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man, the man was good. The seed which was the word of God was good. The Bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds. Some fell by the wayside. Some on thorns. Is that true? Some on a rocky ground and some on good soil. Very good word. Accurate seed. But there were some soils that made the word of God not to produce. To the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed. They were not afraid. They ate it. Listen to Jesus' own interpretation. He said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear. He says Satan comes. Satan is not afraid of the word. Satan is afraid of your understanding and your engaging it. Don't you ever make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of God, the devil will run away. Have you forgotten that he was Lucifer, the light bearer? Satan was the custodian of the mysteries of God. It was his office in heaven. Satan does not fear the word, brothers and sisters. When Satan came to Jesus, he used, it is written good student of the word satan is never ever your access to the word does not scare the devil it is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it that's what paralyzes the gates of hell that you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed that you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper that you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right is God helping us tonight? Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, I want you to listen to me. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, I promise you, for some of you, it will be a matter of days. You will watch things turn around in your life. This thing works. It's just that we are engaging it inaccurately. That's why it's not producing the desired results. The word of God does not work automatically. No, sir. They had the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. If you do not profit in business, what happens to you? You lose. There's nothing like neutral. So if the word of God does not profit a man, 
it means on account of that word he can lose some things yes it is the word the correct word Jonah carried a word from God entered a boat with the word made people to lose everything with the word in him because the word was wrongly engaged the word was for Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered that you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well huh. are we together if Moses never had an encounter with God he would have been spared but Moses saw certain dimensions of the word and God would not tolerate certain things from him and said no Moses your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief you are not entering the promised land period if he was blind he would have entered quietly the word does not work automatically many believers in the body of Christ this is what we have been taught the moment come doctor the moment you find the word believe it confess it go and sleep hey. listen I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting I am I am a confessor of the word listen 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 this is a system go and buy rice buy fish buy oil drop everything heat your pot and go and sit down talk to me ladies that sounds to me like rice well prepared rice no sir while you are in the parlor keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready you are doing the right thing but after a very wrong approach are you seeing that now this is what many of us have done we just get a scripture in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says I shall lend to nations I will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say God let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete that means your obedience can be incomplete it is obedience but it is not complete are we together yeah. planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and miss one or two steps have you seen people have accident because they just slept the, the car was going well the fuel but they missed a step and that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because I have seen the word of God and just jumped around it it won't work that way I want to show you tonight how to engage the word I started last week I want to show you the operation how does this thing work the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see I love everybody but I don't listen to everybody I love everybody I am open to learn but I have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results I want to get I don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what I believed yesterday I want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that I attain something very tangible I've always shared it is like taking lectures everywhere will you be awarded a degree at the end of it today you go to medicine next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts and then next tomorrow you just go to PG block and just stand by the door and attend anything you are writing after many years you have been engaging randomly it is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding up along the path of a field this is how it is many of us are not in ignorance of what we want 
but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome this brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people you will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if god does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters god is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of god compels him to action the darkness the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light wonderful sympathetic to that environment but until the word of god came nothing changed hallelujah engaging the word of god <clears throat> scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light listen the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple the entrance not the reading not the recitation not the quoting not the watching the entrance there is an activity of the word when it enters into your spirit truly the bible says it can give light and then dependent on your state it can graduate from light to understanding are we together now that's what the bible says would happen to us and if we understand how the word of god works then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another the laws of god listen to me the laws of god are a representation of his love and his justice you have to understand this don't let the laws of god irritate you they are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory James chapter 1 we're reading from verse 22 to 25 James chapter 1 Apostle James is teaching us now James chapter 1 but be ye doers of the word everyone say doers of the word and not hearers only then he says if you are a hearer only what are you doing to yourself deceiving yourselves to 25 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty what is it called the law that liberates men the law of liberty that when you access it it can set you free from any bondage and continue daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results I must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later ah I see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort 
and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time is God speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the Bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong I don't know about you but I'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working I don't lie that it's working I go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way Shakata bakataya. I cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way Lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by God to guide me there is the truth somewhere and I begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever pray in one minute lord show me what i'm not doing right show me what i'm not doing right i take responsibility i would have been healed by now there is something i'm not getting i'm missing a step for sure what is closing the doors of favor over my life why does this sickness leave and come back why 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 do people help me today and hate me tomorrow why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow there is something i do not know why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern 
and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10 percent of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you're a madman you're, there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when jesus saw madmen read your bible every madman jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it number one <laughs> number one we do not engage the word with understanding the first reason why the word of god seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding in all thy getting get understanding in all your sowing so with understanding in all your praying pray with understanding in all your serving serve with understanding in all your dancing dance with understanding the bible says whatever it is that you get have an understanding of what you are doing that's the first reason why the word of God seems important the second reason is that the word of God is not engaged at all the word of God may be believed it may even be received but it's not engaged the word of God is not engaged at all we leave the responsibility of engaging the word to God and let me tell you where this mistake came from it is in not knowing that the grace of god like wisdom and like love are multifaceted everybody say multifaceted there are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do so the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe 
the report and confess the lordship of jesus the moment you do that the bible says you are saved for with the heart this is how this operation works for with the heart man believes unto righteousness romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 i believe and verse 20 it says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think above that who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking you i'm doing the thinking i'm doing the asking but i am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all i do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it read your bible deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe do and observe do and observe all that is written how many all all that is written all that if you do not just hear not just speak do according to all that the lord commands not according to the way you want then it lists a number of promises that the lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you then it begins to list them there is a doing listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to god's command is called partnership is what great men of god will call covenant the obedience that binds you and commits you to god please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all so here's how it works come this is a promise by god emeka i am going to make you exceedingly fruitful i am going to make you such an anointed man see from scripture this is my destiny for you this is god speaking now it is left for emeka to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny lord are you not powerful who am i weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer satan wants because he comes and says look look if god is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how satan plays with our minds he said god he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say lord i just confess and leave everything and god says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down
this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing god father this is how we pray look up father i pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family Lord, are you not looking at my father what is i'm reading that you are a merciful god what is all this nonsense oh god then you apologize and get back again okay lord i'm, I'm serious what i'm trying to say is can, will you not step into my family and god says look there is an ordinance i bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh god have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony i guarantee you if you are one of them i show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what sir isaac newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move i must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind those kinds of people will never rise so how does the word how does god himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that god is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing i know the person i believe and i am persuaded in his ability i am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of god now this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes because it is the spirit of god that makes jesus real to believers miracles do not make jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away So the first thing is an encounter, an encounter with God. The foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that God is alive. And number two, that he is mighty and able. You have to settle that. Otherwise, your journey to exploring the word of God is a waste many religions teach all kinds of things about jesus christ and about god and even in the christian faith there are all kinds of disturbing variations 
and understandings about God. There are people who believe that God is not really God. He's just one of the many deities. So the Adam is an all-inclusive thought about God. That God, the name God is like a man with so many dimensions. And Jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions. If that's what you believe, the word will not profit you. You see that? Yes. Number two. When your conviction is settled. Now listen carefully. Number two. Is that there must be a searching. The Bible says for everyone that seeketh, find it. There must be a searching. You don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything. All keys don't open any door. There are specific keys for specific doors. Are we together now? Yes. You cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the Holy Ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there. But you just stand, oh, and he was alone. And you just quote it and say, Lord, I, 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 at least it's the Bible. Bible is Bible. No, sir. No, sir. All this humanist point of view that keep punishing us, you have to find the accurate word. The key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom. The key to your bedroom does not open your car. The key to your car does not open the safe of a bank. They all require keys. But you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern. And where you do not know those scriptures, follow those who have conquered in that area. They have conquered by the word. You see how it is? So this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing. And I'm trusting God. Now I believe God wants to anoint me. I'm tired of my church struggling, sick people not being healed. And I search around. I'm in ignorance. And I just find out, okay, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I receive, but nothing is working. It means I have to explore. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery. All you do is just read. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I believe. Now the Holy Ghost is upon me. And you get up. You are seeing that nothing is working. That's to tell you there is more than that thing you read. Every time the obvious does not produce result, go prophetic immediately. It means there is, there is a deeper understanding. Every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire, there must be a prophetic interpretation. So I access her materials and I sit with the Holy Spirit. And then I trust him to begin to open me up. Now listen, listen, listen. When you begin to study the Bible and meditate upon it, you need time and you need concentration. Two things that we lack in this, our distracted generation, time and concentration. You can't be cooking and trying to access revelation. You quickly the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you you run and then while you are trying to off the gas you return back you won't continue where you left you will start afresh again it's like worship when you finish worshiping and they take light you hope that they bring it fast if they don't bring that light after 30 minutes don't think they just bring it and you continue no somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone time and concentration let me tell you this many believers are distracted it's a strategy of satan you are studying your bible and playing computer game satan yes sir satan i didn't say satan made the game Satan created that system to distract you. Studying your Bible and making a long call. Then what did you say? I'm still on it. No. No, sir. No, sir. Study great men. How does God reveal these things to them? When there was a need for revelation, Daniel said, Oh, king, don't worry. Just give us time. Daniel was not loitering around. In the silence, then the secret was revealed. 
then the secret was revealed there are some of us who believe that because you are always around people it's a sign that you are a famous person let me advise you you may not be very great if your entire life is corporate you must understand the power of a private life are we together it's good to have a corporate fellowship it's good to be with your husband your wife your children but there are times listen certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone even demons work like that there are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone there are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone i want you to learn this these things i'm teaching you are, are the ways god has opened me up to revelation you need conviction then you need to search out let me take one area that is very obvious for us let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity for instance things are not working in your life things are not working in your family let me tell you what many of us say oh god i've been crying about this employment issue it won't you wipe my tears and give me a job be very honest is it a job that is going to solve your problem i'm not saying a job is bad but you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom not a job you don't make money off job you don't make money off business you make money off understanding are we together now yes and so the person just says well lord i thank you and then you believe that things will change or your health you are trusting god the devil is afflicting your body afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible i i got a very powerful revelation from bishop david Oetico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that i cannot begin to explain do you know that satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty he doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you, are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us and say you are, you are you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons i pray for people and i look at certain sicknesses i know that this has to be a demon praise the lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach 
to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, 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 a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of I say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the Bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is God speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because I've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is Satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God sir poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life take it from me when you stand and see an empty plate before you you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are you are thinking steal it are we together you know we don't tell ourselves the truth in church we lie to ourselves is that true is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if God has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of God do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as they are counting the finance department they write a check a blank check they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men please answer me how much does the poor man have is it not a big man somewhere that promises them that I will change your life? And you are there and your ends have not met. Then you, you don't know where dinner will come from. Yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue. There are people now, some of you students, school is about to resume. And the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from. So when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of God stopped loving God and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what God is saying these are strategies of the enemy please I if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints we are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now as soon as they graduate they just say Lord I want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy I just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down you say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension i was running your your school you are staying one year to see god that means i'm not a christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny i'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say i want to leave society says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Hi. may god raise a generation of people that will access these things 
you know years ago i listened to our father in the lord bishop oedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry i don't want to sit down serving god thinking about money imagine if i was thinking about my daily bread i now prophesy to you and say sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you, see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it. Let me tell you, prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can sit down and spend time worshiping. Bless your people, oh God. Not come and say you are joining the queue. Where is the envelope you are holding? You, you can imagine that kind of thing. So it's not every man of God you see doing these things that are bad. They have not understood how to engage. This is what I'm trying to bail you from. Are we together? Do you know how to command results? Or are you aware that results can be commanded? Do you know how to command it? Or are you aware? Brothers and sisters, if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, do you know how to come out? Or do you hope you will come out? There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear are power twins that satan brings to your life to disturb you on one side you are afraid but on another side there is tremendous arrogance so they will not learn when i find somebody who has an understanding in an area i don't i will not argue no matter what i don't understand about what he's saying i give his revelation a chance there are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor listen to a message and say this is not correct look at the person talking are we together there are many people who have never prophesied they have never seen anything and they'll tell you hear god alone don't listen to a man of god the person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of god nobody needs to prophesy to your life forget about just do this and and for this cause many are weak there are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for but they can stay for 10 years they've done everything well but one thing is needful and they've missed it are we together don't criticize what you don't understand let your heart be open to say lord speak to me It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word? Let's start with our spiritual life. Some of you think I'll start with money. Listen first. Your spiritual life. Hallelujah. 
spiritual life. <laughs> if I ask you, how do we grow spiritually? What are you going to tell me? I read my Bible and I pray every day. Question, have you not been doing it? Have you been growing? <laughs> are we together? There are many liars in church. We just open the Bible in the morning and read anywhere. We are just come. Is the purpose of reading the Bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual. They just open any scripture. And Abraham did this. Then they open another one. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Then they pray, Lord, I thank you. Today is blessed. I speak to this day. And then they come out and their lives are messed up. And after many years, they don't grow. Brothers and sisters, that's not how we grow in the kingdom. You never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words. Take it from me. No, you don't grow that way. Not in the anointing, not in the knowledge of God. I want to show you how to grow. Because people can grow. Let me tell you the first key to growth. Write it down. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter. This is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom. Jeremiah chapter 29, please give it to us. And verse 13, 13, 13, 13. Jeremiah 29, read it with me. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The last three words, please. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. You see these three words? That is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God. It says, and ye will seek me. Many are doing it. But you will only find me when you search for me with everything everything brothers and sisters your motive and your hunger for god vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your study of bible and your reading of books there are many of those who wrote the bible they work in zondavan they work in white taker house the publishing companies but they are not born again printing the bible and walking around it does not bring growth there is a depth of hunger read your bible everyone who found god in the bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of god mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search Ye shall seek me. Hear what David said. A man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks. Reading the Bible does not mean you pant after God. It may just mean you are not yet employed. So you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy. Brothers and sisters, there is one thing I know. If you must remain in the faith, you need an encounter with God an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you didn't an encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of God meet God. An encounter is where those who are desperate for him, they say, oh God, as a matter of life and death, that is the place where he washes you. That is the place where he builds you. You don't have an encounter, you will never grow spiritually. We can flatter ourselves. Listen, 
the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth there is a big deception sweeping the body of christ and thank god i walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe i'm just talking listen i can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace the anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth it is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office if that anointing comes on a handkerchief it will produce the same result handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives listen that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they'll be healed after 10 days find out whether he will still do it again it's gone because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you are like this is is this thing is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them service is going on they are at the back of the church gisting taking sugar cane eating biscuit they now say it's time for elijah to come and minister and then just cleans his mouth and comes and after five minutes you see people rolling on the floor and you finish you say my god elijah no sir no sir God does not judge you based on the gift in your office. It's based on how much you pursued him. Seekers of his presence. You can study the Bible out of competition to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions. You can study the Bible out of just to make sure you have sermons. I know pastors and that's wonderful. I teach it too. There are pastors that have a sermon for every topic. All they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip. What are we talking about now? Uh, the art head will float again. Ah, I remember 2004, I preached a message like that. Just dust it, add A and B. Are we blessed? The starting point of your spiritual life is to trust God for a hunger that can last your lifetime. Hmm. I will give up ministry a thousand times. Some of you don't like what I'm saying because I said I'll talk about money too. You better listen to what I'm telling you because this is, this is what will make money not kill you. I want you to ask the Lord, he will tell you, there is nothing in this life, nothing in this life that I cannot give God. Ask him. There is nothing. That is the measure of your love for God. The measure of your love for God is not sung. When you say you love this lady, she says, sir, I've not eaten. I say, sorry, they just called me at the police station. You are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension i'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see god do in my life today i submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting it's because god knows that anything he gives me is his own ah, my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen i'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the bible how many pastors move around oh my member my choir my this and god says all right so you pay the bills you 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 decorate everything you bring members by yourself how many churches put pressure on their people? Go and bring five souls. Otherwise, you pastor will look at you and say, I saw three. Please. 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 
John Wesley said set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you burn where the carcasses are brothers and sisters that's where the eagle will come there are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning my heart belongs to you my life belongs to you when i go to pray he is lord of my prayer I don't just go as if I'm a fool. As if you are, you are, you are chanting a, a charm. I approach God like one who is totally dependent on Him. He is the Lord of my prayer life. Many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy. So when we do it and someone is watching you, you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior. No, sir. This is not how spiritual things work above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you there is a meeting place and i i i'm desperate for you hey help that lady and i This is how it works in the kingdom. And now, I'm desperate for you. Listen, man of God, let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you. Because every time you think power, you think conference, you think of a plane flying you around every time you think god you think honorarium every time you think god you think man of god you imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying this is apostle and god says you know way you fast try 100 days and god says in spite of it and ye shall seek me and only find me and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches oh, one is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter Encounter is not sitting down and no. It is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment. There were people who will lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night. Now, when people lock themselves to pray, it is oh God, give me a wife. Oh God, give me a husband. I'm not saying these things are wrong. Oh God, give me this. Oh God, I must graduate. Oh God, I must get a job. Service, what is all this nonsense? And ye shall seek me. Please, God is not a joker. Let me tell you. If all of you does not seek him, forget about it. There are ladies seeking God only to prepare themselves for ministry. No, you won't find God that way. If at any point you find yourself using God, just know that you and the anointing, you and glory, you are far. Please hear what I'm telling you. I, I never started, hold on, I never started my walk with God knowing I will even be a preacher. One, one gentleman came here, I think some months ago, with documents from his ministry, well articulated, 
and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me use all of me use all of me I lay my everything take my everything I release my everything take my everything say take all of me all of me Lord Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place I'm not a musician this this is what happens when you want to grow Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences but brothers and sisters these men were seekers of God there was a prophetess called Anna the Bible says she stayed in the temple stayed in the temple since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple Listen, preachers, we are the ones to blame first. Leave members alone. We don't have any encounter ourselves. We just come up and dress well. That you are preaching right does not mean it's releasing life. The life is from your secret place. Not the Greek, not the Hebrew. Hear me, the life is from your secret place. He said the word is like a double-edged sword. That sword that enters the spirits of men. You can't fake it. Listen. Honestly speaking, we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God. We know how to preach. We know how to sing. We know how to produce albums. We know how to write books. But to seek his face. Where you are fasting not because you want power. You are saying Lord show me more of you. Reveal yourself to me. I remember those days in the night. Those of you in vet. Vet a faculty of um, what they call it now. Vet. There is a place, one of the neglected places. I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night. I would be there till morning. Crying and saying, Lord, I've created a place where no one can distract us. Reveal yourself. I wasn't looking for power. Reveal yourself. Right now, what happens in the church is just, an, is just a galore of talent law of talent i am this i read this i know this i dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of god in the body of christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with god lord I rehand my life again. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Hey, use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. I give all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. 
listen the bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the bible says she came before god with her treasure a representation of her all let me show you how to get the heart of god other people were coming with all their we know that moses said this and he said this is not what i'm looking for but here comes a woman the bible says she came with sparking out pure nerd one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before god the king poured it the bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give god your heart and take finance you can give god finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what i'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that working with god does not pay no you want to do business with god there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving god eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of god in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days you will not see anything you want to see demons crying out as you minister brothers and sisters is not running around to look for a man of god you a man cannot impart his secret place no sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation one of the most deceptive thing happening in the body of christ now is this craze for impartation people just write the names of five or ten men of god around that they think are anointed and divide seats like a business and hop from one location to the other touch me and then they snap i i i got impartation from this it's me please i got impartation for wealth apostle i got impartation for this prophet this give me your own then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings you are joking you think god is that cheap he said many are called though but few are chosen gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone like roommate and you hear people groaning and crying before god in the night now people snort their way till morning a pastor a preacher oh god anything that will take your presence from my life may it not come 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 ministry i will give it up a thousand times money marriage children a thousand a million times listen those of you here who god has called into ministry or you are going into ministry please let me give you a loving caution be careful be careful who you follow matters be careful there is a path there is a path that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for god people follow your hunger not your talk while you are talking people are watching you and they will find out is it true that this person hungers after god brothers and sisters i have met preachers in my life who preach what i call a boring message but the presence of god that left them left me going back to cry and say from whence cometh this man which depth where did this what did this person touch that's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke Crusade. I didn't go there to hear revelation. I was already preaching. I was already working in miracles. I went to hear a man who knew God. He talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it. Let's return back to the secret place. Let's return back to retreats. 
it's a language we are not used to again learn to off your phone no please learn to source especially now that is december don't enter do you know why we end koinonia we have just one more service and we are done that one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before just go back and say ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it christmas holiday it's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves i can't wait to finish the last service where i know that i have time no more counseling no more ministrations and let me lock myself and cry and roll before the god of my salvation not looking for power for next year not looking for prophetic word for next year i don't get the prophetic word by searching i get the prophetic word by worshiping god and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me there are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me they are waiting to hear something a revelation oh greek logos and then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship gentlemen i shipped something from somewhere we will keep mocking ourselves with this thing you don't fake presence when you carry the presence of god it is palpable 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 something happened i don't know when when which of the days now it was i was alone and someone came to see me and i wasn't even out here the person just sat down i went in and all of a sudden i came and saw the person shaking like a leaf shaking like a leaf and i looked i said my god do you know why because you can make your house a habitation of angels all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God is death not prayer not Bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the word of God now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say I've gotten to the throne I wish I can go through this death for you it is one thing I know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing God experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that God must subject you through to cause you to know him yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death until I walked there I never knew that I can fear no evil we live in a generation that binds everything we don't have discernment to know whether it is of God whether it is a furnace that God is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually a pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him anything you see that is not favorable to your senses you cast it and many of us have casted the realms from which power will come there are people who God will say all of you go for work gone are the days where people hear God like this and somebody says you oh, for you two years you are with me no work for you and everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you and saying this your stupid man of God has turned your head upside down and you feel that pain and it is in that pain you know something about God We don't have experiences that make us know God. We are full of theory. There is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter. You don't know God by theory. People are in a rush to go to, for ministry. Some of us, when God called us, it took his grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves. We knew it was not the issue of intellect. Is God speaking to you? I remember those days when we traveled for crusade. It was not the boosting of a man of God's ego. People looked forward to encounters. Encounters.
us with the power of God. Never embarrassed by our failures. Right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things. If someone prayed for the sick and he, did, he was not healed, you may not see that person for the next three days. Not because the person is, not because his tongue is ego. It's a revelation that you must know more. And the person will unlock lock himself. Lord, there's got to be more. But right now, pastor lays hands on 90 people. 90 people don't get healed. And he says, well, at least we had a successful intellectually sound meeting. Will I ever be that kind of preacher? Do you have time for God? I know you have a Bible. I know you pray, but do you have time for God? Show me the book where you record his voice. Show me the encounters. Show me the personal vigils that you do. Personal vigils, not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything. Alone. I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God. I would never forget. I came around Chapel of Redemption there. He was in the rain. It was raining. Yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort and we are angry. Nah, need it. No. I can't go to church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They wouldn't think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something. You turn, ah, this lady that I like, this other one who respects me. My son is here. My daughter is here. Death. That's why we fight. I am Apostle Joshua Selman, not Brother Joshua Selman. Fight. That's a sign that you are alive in yourself. Please, in one minute, if I'm unable to continue, no problem. I'd like you to be honest. I want us to repent this night. Let's take five minutes. I don't know what position you will assume. Worship just set the atmosphere for us with the cymbal. Play the strings. I want to hear that sound of the strings. I give you five minutes with your makeup. Please. I'd like you to cry your heart to Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to be honest. Take all of me Use all of me Let his glory come upon you. Let anybody another na na Lord, afresh, 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 afresh. A fresh, a fresh, fresh encounters, fresh encounters. Leda masena na masena na lele da da she da da lele da da lele da da. It's important to receive truth but it's important to not let what you know stop you from receiving what you don't know are we together my life 
not many people know about the spiritual dimensions of my life and my experiences i've only shared very little of them i've had very strange experiences in my life i have met so many spirits i have met so many beings i have met demons i have met all classes of beings some of them are only beings that you see in films i've had strange encounters and i've had dreams things have happened in my own life there are times that i've sensed the burden to pray and i got up praying and someone will send me a text saying he saw me somewhere and i can't remember leaving my body going anywhere these are very strange phenomena that you you can't just throw away i remember a a man of god preaching about a lady years ago who was not a pure human being i had problem with that teaching at that time i said what do you mean everybody in the flesh is a pure human being i said no your culture and my culture there is somewhere reserved there where they teach that people can come back it is their little way of attempting to explain certain phenomena they have seen people even in our world today there have been all kinds of spiritual experiences children have been born who will tell you stories of world war world war one world war two and describe it in detail and the parents are watching them how old are you you are four years but the level of intelligence is not of this civilization and they have come to us to ask answers they have gone to uh, hindu baha'i and all kinds of religions the church has the answer to all this but we are lazy and many times not spiritual enough and not flexible enough that's the word we have already clamped ourselves ar around certain dimensions and we will not allow the spirit to be flexible enough to stretch us until we see what is true i have prayed for people i have seen strange things in my life i've seen anointed men and women of god manifest under demon spirits to my amazement anointed people i remember years ago a gentleman i don't know if he's from kaduna or one of these states very anointed man of god i remember him coming to see me for counseling because things were not working in his life at a point ministry just went down there were all kinds of troubles this guy entered all kinds of troubles within the space of one or two months and someone recommended that he'd come and see me and so he came and as soon as he entered my room then i saw a strange being enter with him this is a very anointed person and then i wanted to just talk to him you know about this he said, no 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 don't talk to me about any demon sir just agree with me i just came for a higher anointing i was trying to tell him you are there arguing i'm 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 seeing it like i'm seeing you and i said okay no problem can you allow me just pray for you and the gentleman okay sluggishly and arrogantly like we men of god do i barely touched this brother's head and he almost scattered everything in that room coughing out manifesting all kinds of things by the time that guy was done and he got up i think for like three days he kept sending me texts he said apostle you have scattered my entire theology to its foundation a man of god delivering people praying for them ministering under the power of god now i come in contact with another man of god and i wake up five minutes later haven't littered the place sweating around what happened what is the mystery behind the challenge in our families that we gather together and pray to the god of heaven oh lord attend to us and while we are praying the matter is going from bad to worst then we sow a seed then we do this and that what what is the explanation behind the patterns in families they look like coincidences but you, no matter how long it seems to catch up with people there are families listen carefully please listen with an open heart there are families you will never get married first until you have a child out of wedlock no matter how careful you are it has nothing to do with being bad or being evil some of them are pastors some of them are leaders what of poverty 
there are cities you enter and you find out that things go bad there are cities when you enter you will become broke immediately not more than one month no matter how hard working you are you enter those cities just stay for a little time except you sustain an intelligence higher you can be earning one million per month after 10 years you will still stay in a rented house it's not the occurrence of men there are deeper mysteries than our eyes can see there are other cities no matter how careless you are you can enter within a short time and you will anything even if it's selling salt it will prosper you to the point that those who are prosperous cannot exactly tell you what they are doing there are men of god that leave certain cities and go to certain cities and it's as if they are no longer anointed everything scatters and they wonder what happened god boy you sent me here there are families when you get to a particular age range it's like an equation is activated in the spirit something starts happening patterns of sicknesses patterns of failure we have pretended they don't exist we have attempted to shut our mouths and say don't worry you just keep believing things will happen you approach life like that you are going to be frustrated are we together the same way there are people who are born and a small child of two years is already seeing visions daddy i saw this mommy i saw this that child has not had the opportunity to give his life to christ yet the father sees the mother sees the sister see even the drunkard brother sees visions and not even the drunkenness took away the vision he can be in a beer parlor and see an accident happening somewhere and say it like that yet you are here fasting lord open my eyes after 40 days dry the only thing you see is a spirit that comes to oppress you something is wrong how about people going to bed in the night and a spirit appears and sleeps to, with them it's happening to many of you it's just that people have been trained to keep quiet how will i say this embarrassment you get up knowing that something has happened to you someone wants to bless you you go back in the night to sleep and something happens whether it's an animal whether a human being it was here in koinonia someone was injected in a dream with hiv and he got up physically with hiv from a dream the same way solomon received an understanding heart from a dream and woke up physically with it people had seen themselves dying in dreams and they kept laughing and two weeks later truly they died what is this mystery that surrounds us every day can't someone give us intelligence enough not to create fear but to help us understand what is this whole thing mother was raped a young lady raped now you have daughters and somebody it makes a house help to have to come and rape the small girl and you look and say no all these people were not connected something seemed to have connected them from the realm of the spirit how about students who are about to write final paper last exam last everything all of a sudden they find a piece of paper on the ground and say stand up you you have done malpractice and because of that they just drive them away do you think it's natural does it look natural to you how about those who receive salary listen carefully many well-meaning hard-working civil servants there are many people who were trained in our own houses and they are the ones feeding our parents still today they came as children they were trained in the same house they got up prospered and built houses and they are still bringing welfare and giving people there are many of us you enter a street and the way it was when you were 10 years is still the way it is now try to build a house there and watch what happens something is wrong someone has got to explain to us what is this mystery around our lives there are families where all the men die mysteriously sometimes in a two two year circle a three three year circle a man can be sitting in his house quietly do you think all these spray bullets that happen in america that somebody just stands and just shoots and shoots some people don't you ever they they have to create an explanation oh this was emotionally imbalanced it's a lie it's a lie 
spray bullets just do everything and kill five of your family members alone and the thieves go for no reason there is an explanation my assignment this month is to open your eyes some of you will call your loved ones and say daddy we need to meet as a family this is it are we together my father is the only one alive of all his brothers I knew that my father would have died since nobody I don't know who is the most prosperous person from my paternal lineage with all humility I think it may be me can you imagine that they are not lazy a, a whole lineage and the most educated person just finished secondary school no matter how hard working you've seen them bring people here there was a time a mother brought a, a dear lady here 500 level medicine she started developing signs of bipolar and now the girl just went mad let that lady leave 10 years later when her life is almost useless the madness will go by itself brothers and sisters if we don't wake up the devil is going to destroy us hear what i'm telling you there are ladies the moment a guy comes to say i love you just that i love you something must happen i want to go and see your parents accident breaks his leg destroys him and all of a sudden they will go to a prophet and because many times prophets don't have that word balance as should be they will interpret things from the lens of their limited understanding and say look i'm seeing that that girl is a witch i'm seeing that she comes from a family that is a witch there is a gentleman in this ministry i think that dad just went to be with the lord he was a priest with an altar they were supposed to bring the altar here for destruction when i was counseling that time i when i used to counsel people would come with their charms they would come with their charms beautiful lady nobody ever i'm not even saying that somebody cannot come to marry you to ask you out there are ladies nobody has ever tried to ask you out wear anything and look nice there is something wrong in this series i'm going to be showing you something i discovered joshua caused jericho say whoever builds it will build it with the blood of his firstborn and complete it with the blood of his lastborn i will show you a king who tried to build jericho and his firstborn died and as he finished his lastborn died joshua had long gone oh, yet it was still working there that everything was working in jericho except the water that had become mara it had become bitter Joshua said, bring me salt. Something is wrong. Ah. To break every chain. 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 Listen, there are families that their warfare almost never ends. They don't know why. From one trouble to another, today your father is in a police station. As soon as he's finishing, he's going to court. As soon as he's done, they are implicating him in the office. As soon as he's done, they, they rob from your shop. As soon as they are trying to manage, the daughter gets pregnant. Then the brother starts taking something. There is a pattern that is responsible for that. Nothing just happens. There are families where it is the women that feed the men no matter how hard working you are as a man your hand will not bring bread back home i have met people i know they are not lazy i know they are not lazy what of people who travel and go abroad and the devil just orchestrates it that the security just catches them one person and they deport them back they didn't do anything wrong the only person who was helping the mother in the village and all the siblings now the guy was going to a mall and police just catches him and said there was a robbery here and they, where are you from nigeria go back and the person returns back to the village from where he came from and you will see an old man laughing in the village and say i told you no matter where you go you will come back the old man doesn't have visa he's never gone to the airport but he can make a man leave italy and come back and sit down and then we get up and say don't worry everything will be all right come on now there is a deliverer that must arise 
I, I, know, I know the business I did with God in deep waters to break what I am doing now. The level of success in my life is, is almost a taboo from my paternal side. I never saw anybody rise like that. My father is a good man, one of the most honest men I've met in my life. There are families, anyone you train, nobody will ever become anything useful nobody there are some of our parents they started sending children to school before you were born but out of the over 30 children not one of them is useful today the most useful person is sweeping the road somewhere what is that i hear the chains falling shabalakatoska brandishia my the chain falling my keys hallelujah there are families where nobody ever becomes a leader no matter how you rise you only make it by serving you never get to a point where you are served a man can work for 10 years when he's almost getting to the highest rank a scandal will come up that he knows nothing about they demote him until he retires my brother my sister nothing just happens our destinies are being manipulated by forces we may not know and just because of imbalances here and there which i will show you many have rejected this some of you as you are sitting now i just described your life to you you know you love God. You are praying. But nothing is changing. Nothing is changing. You are praying. You are fasting. Nothing is changing. I know somebody that did like four or five universities. Never finished one. Never. You leave this one and go there. They say you are an occultist. You leave this one and go there. They say something happened to your result. Your result is not correct. You leave this one and go there. And there is problem not i'm opening your eyes i'm showing you how this relates to you a gentleman sent me a text he had gotten his visa he got everything he got yellow card yellow card at the airport is where they stopped him and said where did you get this yellow card did you get i said what is all this one now i use a travel agency i'm traveling say no took the guy to custom office blah 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 this and that happened they seized the passport sent him back footballer footballer that was going had already gotten those teams that can invite you to go and play this guy was god was sending him to now bring bread for the parents and at the airport one devil somewhere just stops that person he will return back the house you are staying is the house your grandfather stayed for 40 years your father could not build one you too you are staying there have you seen families where all the brothers with their married wives stay in the same house with the parents and the grandparents is that what the bible says doesn't the bible say a man should leave his father and mother but you leave something brings you back grandfather is in the same house grandmother is in the same house the brother is in the even as a pastor part of the veranda is being used for night vigil and regardless of the night vigil and the prayer nothing is happening how many vigils have we done how many prayer sessions have we done how many men of god have been in ministry and you will think being in ministry will automatically get them free from this regardless of their ministry and anointing these spirits seem to just veto them just like that Abraham as anointed as Abraham was for 25 years Abraham had no child it's not just a faith issue because you see it in Isaac Abraham slept with Hagar once and a child came so it was not just about barrenness he was not barren it was a conspiracy it was a fight of destiny Are you getting what I'm saying now? Could you say that Abraham was Abraham was not impotent? Hagar was there, gave him a child. 
and yet Sarah could not give him a child 25 years Isaac with his own too are we together now all kinds of troubles by the finger of the devil have you paid attention to look at your life what of the hardship the inexplainable hardship that is in our lives hardship there is no ease at all no matter what you do you are brilliant you are educated you started working by 23 you already had phd yet nothing is happening that's the finger of satan and for many of us we have seen it in dreams but you see it in dreams and get up and say no 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 don't worry let me just ignore it i don't think anything is right some of you cannot go to bed in the night i've shared with you my story when i will go to bed in the night and demons will come to press me as a man of god though i'm not saying an unbeliever filled with the holy spirit and these demons will not respect this anointing i will go to bed in the night and these demons will come and press me i will shout jesus like i was told to shout not one time did jesus drive them i mean something is wrong because the bible cannot lie there is something we need to know when the lord showed me i was free and my assignment is that god will open your eyes so that you will see some of you will be surprised that after this series all the seven jobless people in one month will get jobs like that so you will now know that until deliverance happens upon mount zion there is no possession of anything oh i will help you bring your cv it's nonsense you are wasting your time how many people have gotten scholarships eh, Jimmy? how many people have gotten grants how many people have gotten millions some of our parents have sat down on over one billion but as it is right now they can't bring out hundred thousand it's not normal let me tell you if this thing is not addressed i promise you it can wait for you for 40 years and catch up with you you will think just because you are 25 years 30 35 you are free the day it catches up with you how about people who labor when they are about to eat of their labor they just mysteriously whether through sickness or accident or whatever inexplainable coincidence nobody ever eats of their labor they work and live for others now please don't feel bad if what i'm saying relates to your loved ones god is opening your eyes because you are the savior that will arise from zion some of us today our mothers have told us don't ever bring a poor man do you know why because of something that they saw there is a yoke upon their family all the women suffer they enter wicked marriages where they suffer like slaves and so in an attempt to help you say look go and bring a rich man bring as prosperous a man as you can get and don't be free from what i'm telling you and watch the drama that happens when that ring enters your hand this is what i do every day it's like a lecturer that has been teaching if my life did not experience this it would be that i'm just talking because of people i've been a victim of what i'm sharing for you that look study the ministries in zaria they don't reach three years safely something must arise and happen find out how many men of god have been in this city for many years and look at the track record that follow it's not that they are bad there are spirits there are powers there are yokes and if our eyes are not open to it then we're getting into trouble are you ready to pray again i'd like you to say lord in this series the challenge in my life and my family must come to end
Hallelujah. I have met spirits in my life. Sit down. I've met all kinds of spirits. The first time I met a physical demon spirit, physical, it was inside the campus, ABU there. There was a generator there. It was in the night. I was praying alone. I'm not talking vision. This is not vision. I just went to the side of that generator and all of a sudden, I saw a being standing and he shouted at me, Get back! What? Spontaneously, I began to pray in tongues. And that was it. Somebody that is physical, just like a student, just disappeared. Went like that. That's when I said, This is serious. This one, this is serious. So we are not alone. This is serious. I have met spirits, I have met devils. Sometimes you just see me preaching and do my mad thing. I can just keep quiet and start rebuking. I don't have to tell you everything I'm seeing. But you see, let me tell you, everywhere believers are gathered, all kinds of things happen. Some of us, there are things that follow you. What do you think happens to you when you are in the room and you keep looking back? You know there is someone. You are not lying. Your spirit knows you are not alone. You are sleeping and you, you are just afraid for reasons you can't explain. You are an adult, so you are not supposed to be afraid. The spirit of a man is powerful. The spirit of a man is like an antenna. You can pick something. You may not explain it, but you can pick it. You can be lying down and know that death is around. What is there is death. This is not just discernment. The human spirit, even animals, souls, animals can start backing. There are all kinds of scientific explanations. Before any hurricane, the animals run. It's only men that remain there and die like chickens. Birds relocate. The fishes relocate. Only men remain there and we die like chickens. How demons operate, right? How do they operate? What is the system of operation in a demonic kingdom? What, what is the basis? How do they operate? What has made them so powerful like this? What has made them so powerful that from Asia to the US, to the UK, to the Middle East, to Africa, it looks like there are networks of operation that keep men in a common captivity. Same problem regardless of location. What sort of orderly civilization is that? That they can destroy the lives of people. From villages to towns to cities and all of that. We have not been able to build a network that has covered the whole world like that. They can be strong in regions. Yet the devil has built an arsenal that for as long as you are upon the face of this earth, there is a system of reaching you. There are three main ways three main ways that demons and satan listen carefully there are three main ways that demons and satan have access to all men including believers only three from the authority of scripture there are only three ways number one write it down covenants number one covenants Covenants. Let's talk about it. Please look up. You can get my teaching, the altar of prayer. Listen to it, it will bless you. Covenants. For most of us, all we know about covenants is just the Old and the New Testament. That, um, you know, the Old Testament, a foreshadow of the New and the New, and so on and so forth. As wonderful as that is. That is not the only idea about covenants. Write this down, please. A covenant is a system of authorization. A covenant is a system of authorization between two or more people. A covenant is a system of authorization. between two or more people ratified by the mystery of blood 
ratified by or with whichever the mystery of blood with mutual advantages if kept with mutual advantages if kept and severe consequences if violated with mutual advantages if kept and severe consequences if violated that's a covenant a system of agreement a system of authorization between two or more people or persons it's possible that it, it can be a covenant between a spirit being are we together now that the basis of that covenant that is usually ratified by blood is to create a system where there is mutual benefit where the terms well defined the well defined terms of that covenant are kept and then with severe consequences listen the concept of covenant predates old and new testament you have to understand this the concept of covenant predates old and new testament a system of agreement you read genesis 1 you see a lot of things that god did there are we together and that god signified lights to do certain things to the earth are we together now and they've seen being in obedience there is a system a covenant with the earth that the earth will produce after its kind you don't sow mango and reap banana under no condition are we together if you sow mango you don't have to tell the earth earth may is mango i sow no you just plant mango and it will reap after its kind very accurately noah read an altar in genesis chapter 8 and the bible tells us that god smelled a sweet sever and god made a covenant of seed time and harvest signified with the rainbow is that true many other covenants happen listen there are personal covenants there are territorial covenants it's not just a covenant of old and new testament in the bible people had personal covenants with god very personal covenants lord let us agree that this level of assistance comes to me and if you do this to me some of the covenants had one time conditions and benefits after it, it was gone there were covenants in the bible that the bible will tell you this is for an everlasting covenant everlasting are we together now yes so there are all kinds of covenants an agreement between two or more people that has mutual benefits are we together if obeyed if complied and has a disaster many families africa as a continent is amazing is amazing how with the number of churches there are more churches than there are companies in africa yet the economy has not grown yet many things have not happened our soil is the most productive of all soils in all the seven continents yet in the midst of it israel israel unbelievers who don't love god they farm on top of mountains and yet they export food and we eat it here those while they are farming they are insulting god yet there is a covenant upon their land that commits God to bless them they can talk nonsense against the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you would think God will arise in his fury and curse them how about the Ishmaelites the covenant with Abraham that Ishmael became a partaker of forget the fact that he was a child born out of I don't know what he was illegitimate or whatever it is still covenant because remember when Ishmael was crying and Hagar was crying heaven had only the voice of Ishmael and God came to the rescue because of Ishmael 
and that Abrahamic blessing is still at work till today strangely look at the Middle East a small nation with oil that is greater than that of Nigeria very pockets of nations yet their economy in strange way is not normal my brother my sister it's not normal are we together the first system of authorization that we know on earth that authorizes both God and more importantly for our discussion tonight demon spirits is covenant I will take out time to explain all those ones number two write it down the second system of authorization is disobedience 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 is a force in the spirit just like obedience is a force disobedience is a force it can do things obedience is a force it can make things happen Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 the Bible says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day it says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high there is a condition above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings will pursue you and overtake you are we together now if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord verse 3 begins to list the blessings blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field blessed shall be your needing trough the full of your body are you seeing it there now obedience for the blessing of the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground the fruit of your cattle the increase of this and that and that go to verse 13 and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou shalt hearken if thou shalt hearken to the commands of the Lord and all of that you now begin to read from verse 14 read down it says but if you do not hearken this list of causes shall come upon you he said and shall not go aside we read it down and then it tells you the list of many bad things let's see a few of them uh, let's try 16 cause shall thou be in the city are you seeing the opposite now who is speaking God cause shall thou be in the field 17 cause shall be thy basket a man had a dream he was holding three baskets on his head you call that breakthrough but Joseph said ah this dream means in three days the beds that you will be hanged if you saw yourself with basket with food in the dream would you get up and dance but a basket can be cursed the guy was having three baskets and the beds came and ate it here's Joseph's interpretation in three days the Pharaoh will finally conclude on you they are going to catch you they will hang you and the birds will eat your flesh cause shall be thy basket and thy store let's read to 20 and we'll stop there cause shall be the fruit of your body intelligent people what is the fruit of your body talk to me what is the fruit of your body are you seeing that now and the fruit of your land the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep 19 cause shall thou be when thou come in whether in america or nigeria cause shall thou be when thou go out in case you think the problem is when... <laughs> the lord shall send upon thee cursing vexation families rebuke in all that thou settest thy hands for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish how fast because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me just leave it there disobedience the blood of Jesus does not give authorization or it does not excuse the, the force of disobedience is still at work the same way the force of obedience is still at work are we together the Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand but a curse that has a cause shall stand this is a description of many lives and many families although we will not admit it but it's very clear that this is a description of many lives and many destinies obedience obedience 
disobedience i hope you know that there is a spirit that works in men to make them disobey because satan knows that until you are assisted by a spirit you can't disobey sufficient to allow him have access access to your life consistent disobedience is being empowered by a spirit there is a spirit that works you can't call let me tell you human beings are not so bad when somebody walks in disobedience and rebellion perpetually there is a spirit that assists you authorization number three the third authorization is ignorance 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 Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 ignorance these are the tripartite systems the systems the access the only access points that Satan has Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 let me quote it it says having their understanding darkened then it says alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them so what is the situation here having their understanding darkened there is no understanding then it says as a result being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them it said because of the blindness of their heart that means a man who is in ignorance a woman who is in ignorance or a state of insufficient understanding is a gate pass to Satan and his demons to come and destroy and shred your life into pieces let me tell you this much more than causes uh, and covenants much more than disobedience this is where many well-meaning people come to. they have worked well to break causes in their lives they have worked well to receive grace for obedience but they have not obtained grace for spiritual intelligence to know what to do psalms 82 verse 5 psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness are you seeing that now and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance not knowing what to do the bible says jesus himself knew what to do these three access points listen all the chaos you see in the world is predicated upon these three a covenant that has authorized satan to come into lives and families on a legal basis and let me tell you this maybe next week i will explain to you how they individually work but let me give you a little appetizer covenants are not casted you don't cast and in the name of jesus i cast that covenant no this is where we mock ourselves come promise look at this if promise god forbid just an example right if promise is a thief and this is my phone watch this and promise wants to quickly pick the phone and run away if he hears my footsteps coming what will he do he will run because he's a thief are we together but if promise gave somebody money who claimed that this phone is his own and promise wants to pick it what do you think will happen if he sees me coming a legal transaction occurred he's not going to run he will pick it and I say leave my phone he say what is that it has to take another person to come and settle us I can't push him and say go away there must be a legal basis of proving that the phone is mine the spirits that buffet our families have access our families through covenants they are not illegal occupants they were covenanted intentionally our fathers called them for assistance come and help us in the time of war come and help us and they say what is the agreement the agreement is that all our children will serve you and then some missionaries just flew from from america and just came and died of malaria is it malaria that really killed them come on africa talk to me is it malaria that really killed them no sir let's be wise it can't be malaria 
they had the gospel of salvation but the missionaries did not know the gospel of the kingdom are we together now the gospel of salvation a revelation of the father's love through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus and that's what they came to do and all of a sudden they saw a shrine and said destroy it and leave it and they just kicked the pot and the missionary died two days later are we together now some of us carried certain pots and certain instruments of covenant and destroyed them and believed that we are free they said now everything is destroyed everybody just give thanks and go and they laugh at you from the realm of the spirit the bible says that when a strong man comes to a house and lays claim of a possession he says it will take one greater than he to come and dislodge him and collect those possessions is that true this is what we do not understand there are legal manifestations for as long let me tell you even your salvation did not stop you from looking like your biological father you didn't get born again and suddenly changed to look like an angel in spite of your being born again they can still see you and say uh -uh, are you so 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 son that blood that genetics is still in force if you looked at jesus and you looked at mary you will know ah is this your mother i say yes now in the flesh are we together that was the reason why when jesus resurrected and when john saw him in revelation john could not recognize him on earth they could recognize him of course this is mary's son no it was not a thing of controversy but now they saw him in a radiance they said what is this now who is this one covenants have destroyed us the north has covenants listen carefully the south has covenants the east has covenants listen carefully brothers and sisters northern and hear me beloved brothers and sisters we are not just lazy for nothing there is a spirit making it happen are we together now i don't mean to be sarcastic easterners when they say you love money so much it's not an insult there is a spirit responsible for that thing southerners the same thing all of us were like that if you see any man that is not affected by those things he has stepped into another dimension that has corrected it that's the goal of this series to help you tap into something that all of a sudden will set you free and you will rise and your children will say daddy we used to hear that people who come from this place they are like this and he says son something happened on the way before you were born there was a long story i attended koinonia and something happened some things were corrected once and for all once and for all there is an ordinance in the spirit that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin when the father himself wanted to redeem men he could not violate that he couldn't save man with a divine proclamation after all it was his own creation he could say man i declare you free woman i declare you free that's it and it would have been over however the word didn't come as a spirit to say oh yeah quickly nail me let me die he became a child and grew because if you must function in this kingdom aside from adam and if you must grow whoever comes and appears must return back are we together let me tell you anybody that does not grow in this kingdom cannot stay more than a certain period of time you have to leave that's why when angels come in the bodies of men they cannot stay in their physical body for long they must translate the same way if you are out of your body in a vision or in a, a, a supernatural experience there is a time lapse that you must return back to your body otherwise if you don't your spirit will not be able to return back again occultists will tell you this those who have visionary encounters will tell you there were prophets who were in the spirit having encounters they returned back and they were sick they were sick for many days because they were almost losing it look at people who came back from the dead the first thing is give them food read your bible when people came back to life 
Jesus said, go and get food and give them because they would be so weak. Their spirit had separated for a long time. If they don't give them food, the spirit will go back. Is God helping us to understand? Covenants. 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 Our fathers innocently came and this is what they told them. Just give your life to Jesus Christ and the moment you do it, everything is gone. Now, brothers and sisters, I have taught you two dimensions of operating in the kingdom. There is the prophetic dimension of the speakings of God. There is the prophetic dimension of the word. Realities from God's standpoint. And there is the experience of that reality. Are we together? In the eye of God, there should be nobody in Shika right now. In the mind of God, no doctor should have a job praying for the sick. Are we together? Because none, no inhabitant in the same Zion will say, I am sick. But he didn't tell you what is the dynamics that will keep them healthy. He just told you they would, say, they would not say, I am sick. Are we together? But you go to Shika now and see people who are sick. That does not mean God lied. There is something we don't understand. In the mind of God, nobody should go to hell again. Right from when Jesus resurrected. Talk to me. Are there still people going to hell? Who created the hell? Satan? No! God is still watching them. In the mind of God, there is enough supply by the power of the Holy Spirit. But there are children still crying in Sudan today. These children are crying in Sudan. They are crying until they get to a state of coma. Yet God is still sitting on his throne. Can't he get up? Where was the bread that the angel sent that came and fed Israel? Be careful when you just assume that some things are done. If God is to show mercy just like that, the first is to go to Sudan and help those children first before he comes to you. We make costly assumptions. I'm all right. Everything is okay with me. And the devil says, I like this generation. You just continue. And sometimes, you know, we are very deceived because the moment our hands touch money, most people think they are delivered because they have money. The moment you have financial resources, because you see, in this, our world is driven by economy. The moment you have money, there are many things you can do with money. Money is also a force. Are we together? With money, you can build a house. With money, you can travel for a medical trip. With so, because of that, they don't sense the, the weight of the spiritual consequences. And so, because of the abundance of financial resources, they will tell you, I'm all right. You keep watching. You will start seeing things that money cannot do and money cannot buy. They told you the blessings that this covenant will bring. But they didn't tell you the consequences that follow when they, they are violated. All of a sudden, your innocent father and mother just got up and said, As for me and my family, I will serve the Lord. And although the altars and those who did them are gone, but the altars and the covenant still stand. What did you say you would do? You will not serve these idols again? Yes, I will serve Jehovah, the God of heaven. All right, on legal terms. We bring before the heavenly council the report. This was the agreement. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Hear what I'm teaching you. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. When Abel died, the blood of Abel could not kill Cain automatically. It had to bring a petition. Why didn't Cain just die immediately? No. The soul that sins, it shall die. So when Abel died, why didn't his blood just no 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 the blood had to cry before god god had to summon cain cain there is a case before you here the blood is the witness in the tabernacle of heaven what of the redemption of men jesus after dying here had to carry the blood to the tabernacle father here is the blood i have brought and the father said that's correct now put that blood upon the tabernacle you see, these are the, like, the justice systems of the kingdom. So these spirits can stand and say, look, this is it. It's an agreement. It's on this. Many of you think that when the demons present this to God, God will say, no, I died already. My blood is speaking. No, if that were so, then you didn't need to confess Jesus to be saved. 
the blood that was shed should just save you automatically why did you need to come and verbalize and enter into that personal agreement for it to work for you there are strong reasons and there are cases you must present and these spirits by themselves not even Jesus Christ overrode them he went through the required system now he has become the head of principalities he didn't cancel them he is the head of all of them they are still there he has only risen above them it's in your bible is God helping us we are going to pray these are truths that I have seen why is it that regardless of the blood of Jesus there are still people today you go to the village go to Zaria city and someone will sit down and concoct a charm for you and you will carry that charm and go and do something and it will work and God is still there on his throne watching how many people have used divination to do business and they prospered part of their charm made you go to their shop and you bought you bought something and you say from today I'll start buying eggs from you and yet there is a horn hanging in front of that shop and the day you were angry at the man you still went back again praying in tongues while you are going to go and buy the eggs terrorists sit down and make enchantments in the realm of the spirit and they go and their agenda is achieved no power stops them not military might not anything brothers and sisters something is wrong we must understand the power we have trivialized covenants too much we have trivialized it i'm not planting fear remember this only part one don't stop here if you stop here you have been greatly destroyed because the just this teaching alone will produce a lot of imbalance in your life until you hear the other versions so you don't stop at what you have heard now i always balance my teaching i'm opening your eyes tonight to the reality of these truths to say they are not real is flattery my life refused to rise until i address these things hallelujah my grandfather was a reverend he lived and died serving God they were part of those who hosted the missionaries the early missionaries that came to the north you would think that would change my life automatically it didn't oh. it didn't let me ask you a question you look at this place and you see people sitting outside I was so touched regardless of the rain beating people here and the discomfort many of them patiently stood at the window and everything finished and they went to drop their chairs and sit down is that normal for people to do do you think people have that time to encode what, what is what is the big deal about me no it's more than what your eyes see the same way you can prepare a table and call guests and nobody comes is in the bible prepare the table somebody said i just married my wife please i need to spend time with her and what happens there i just built a house and jesus said okay go and compel them it's called anakazu the power that compels are we together that a man can do business with god and a covenant can empower a man to rise in a strange way I read a documentary about a nation, a particular nation in Middle East, Ejimi. Their hair is five meters long. Five meters. All of them, not just one old person. That's how they are. Five meters long. Long hair like that. No matter who you are. Once you are a lady and you are born there, you must have that long hair. It's not normal. The same way people get they give birth to you um i i schooled somewhere years ago where if you gave birth to a child before you start breastfeeding the child you would touch alcohol with your finger and put it in the child's mouth you will first taste it before breast milk and you'll be wondering why the child will will not be able to do anything wrong with him i'm not insulting cultures we are all in this this is africa 
what of some of you before you get married they tie black ropes on trees and tell you to dance around them you are in a hurry to marry and you don't know what happened you are just dancing how long they just dance and they do all kinds of things they send spirits with you and they tell you that the purpose of that thing is to send spirits to protect you it may be well-being and then you just look and say i don't want any nonsense spirit to protect me and all of a sudden you enter your room in the night and a dirty slap on your face you don't see the hand but you know it's physical and then you start seeing images of grandfather grandmother one ancestor that has gone some of you may even be your physical parents notice what happens when you run back to tell your parents that dream you just tell them i saw a man with a mark on his face he told me to come to him your father will keep quiet and look at your mother and say it's all right they'll say he's back home he's back because they know they know exactly what it means is the reason why we don't succeed look at the amount of well-meaning nigerians who never succeed they go through the rigors of the 364 system and hold their certificate run to abuja no way run to joss run to lagos go abroad no way and then they finally go to some of these countries as graduates with mscs and all they are doing is scrubbing toilets and then another person encounters comes into a ministry as a territory that has a covenant with god and just enters that ministry and in two months things change in his life and the person is wondering what happened and for that two months maybe the man of god has not even been around you step into another thing the ark of obed edom remember the ark of god and dagon until the ark came dagon was always standing but when they dropped dagon side by side they found out by the next day that Dagon fell face forward. Something will fall in your life and, and, and you will know that something has fallen. I don't want to go ahead of myself. You can always know when the deliverance power of God has worked. The simple litmus test is strange results. The moment results begin to come unhindered is a sign that something has given way. But except that power comes you can stand like this and it will block you almost forever some of you are moving physically but you are bound let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray Isaiah 61 let's just find somewhere to stop tonight Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord is upon me who is speaking who is speaking please because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. Now look at the categories of people Jesus was sent to. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to who? The captives. And the opening of prison. That means there are physical people who are walking on two legs. But in the realm of the spirit they are prisoners. You are moving physically but in the realm of the spirit you are in the same spot and very soon your life will show you you are in the same spot all your achievements will reduce back and you will see that after 10 years you are in the same spot You're, you are increasing in education you are increasing in business you are increasing in everything but your result is remaining there there is captivity the bible calls them lawful captives lawful captives who is a lawful captive he was sent in captivity legally 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 brothers and sisters i wish i didn't have to be the one telling you this but it's a truth i have to tell you some of you seated here looking at me right now hearing me online as i speak to you now your families are in need of deliverance as individuals you are in need of deliverance you are in need of the power of God not a temporary deliverance I'm going to be teaching you next week that it is possible to have a temporary deliverance yes it is it is very possible 
because the Bible says that I hold the keys of David and I can open a door that no one can shut that means there are doors you can open and can be shut again is it in your Bible that the doors will be open day and night and shall not be shut meaning if it's open and when your destiny helpers are coming it's shut they have not they go back the doors can open and can shut but there is something that can keep them open that's only the time you receive the forces of the Gentiles because sometimes the door will open and you leave the man of God but before the Gentiles come the door has been closed but there is a mystery that I will teach you it's called the key of David and the Bible says that when a man possesses that key you can open a door and leave it open and no power will shut it I saw this in my life that's why you can go to any city and favor still follows you because it's a master key it's the key of David Halagbara you are the mighty God hey Latobiji you are the glorious God Halagbara you are the mighty God hey Latobiji you are the glorious Listen, there are men who are free, sit down, but the works of their hands are not free. As individuals, they will prosper, but get into anything, it will fail. There are pastors who are free, but their churches are in captivity. As a person, you are not hungry, but your church will never rise. There are people who only regional doors open. You see, the earth has six regions. I will teach you this. There are six regions of the earth. Six, the number of man. The earth has he given to man. There are six regions of operation on this earth. And if it is not open to you, you will know. There are regions you go to that you know the door is closed. There are northern people who can never go to the south and prevail. You can have crowds here. You go to the south and you see four or five people. You come back to your place of territory and the door is open. But when the gates are open, the Bible says, talking about the prisoner, the jailer, he said, all doors open. All, not some. Not some. All doors open. All doors open. All doors open. You will thank me. Many of you are, you are uncomfortable with what I'm teaching you now. But I promise you, what will become of your life, you will be too grateful to keep quiet. You will say, Apostle, thank you, sir. Thank you. So this is the key. It will work like fire if you understand what I'm teaching you. There is no devil that can put this ministry down. The mysteries that surround this ministry are too many. Let me tell you. It's not because the devil cannot come and fight. Uh -uh. Even in the sleep, there is something alive. It was programmed already. It's a system of victory. He said, now thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. There are systems in the kingdom that when you engage by the grace of God and with all humility there is no region I've gone to that they don't like me because you see there is a key it is not normal for people like that they like you today somebody hates you badly tomorrow somewhere Deliverance. I go to cities that are supposed to be very poor cities I'm, you ask the protocol they travel with me and sometimes I'm sitting at the airport looking at people and here's someone coming to me. Apostle, here is this. This is this. This is... And I'm saying, God, what are you doing? What is all this? There's no... You can't undo it when that yoke is lifted off your shoulder. You will know how light life can be. You will know that that burden was not God that put it there. The Bible says the yoke the burden those things are heavy it says my yoke is easy and my body is light hardship is bread is brought about by something There's something sitting on our destinies making a shipwreck of our destinies shipwreck of our lives you call them coincidences but they are programmed programmed by altars programmed by ignorance that's why God sent me to bring this message 
for now is sufficient for you to know at least i've begun to give you answers i have not given you the whole answer but you can go back now knowing that so this is what is happening this is why after koinonia i go back home and my parents quarrel me so it's a reaction of a spirit knowing that salvation is coming i now see why when i finish praying and fasting everybody annoys me the day i say i want to fast that's the day even my best friends fight me it's not about the best friends they are monitoring day and night for when salvation will come the operation of familiar spirits we'll talk about that next week the spirits that grow with men and grow with territories the any trace of revival that they see coming there is an attack they discredit the people who try to bring it that's why everybody that is anointed truly to bless people is greatly persecuted greatly hated for a very long time before the truth comes you know why because these dark powers will make men hate you you are coming to cause men to rise there are some of your dear beloved loved ones who may not exactly like me it's not true there's no man who doesn't like me there are spirits there are yokes so now if this lady goes for koinonia she will come back with a revelation and the 150 years captivity in this family is about to go no way let's find a way let's make her discouraged all of a sudden you find out i don't even want to go to this koinonia again and the day that your word comes that's the day you are not around listen I have studied extensively because I don't want to teach people a lie and I don't want to mislead people and confuse them I love you too much I have studied why many people don't rise in life and I'm telling you this is the explanation it's not like you are so dull most of these scientific explanations are not there I didn't always have favor in my life many men of God will not open up and tell you the truth it wasn't always like this I knew the forces that gave way but when they gave way I knew the difference goodness your life will change my brother my sister it will surprise you how do I know I'm under captivity look at the hardship in your life look at everything when results that should happen don't happen something stopped it look at this promise work and come come He's supposed to walk normally because nothing should stop him. Now you try to come. Try to hold him. Try to drag him at the back while he's coming. Come, promise. Are you seeing? Ordinarily, he's supposed to have arrived by now. But he's doing... You can't see what is at his back. Him too, he can't see it. But something is holding him. This is your destiny. By now, there are things that should have happened. You see it in your dreams. That you are, you are 10 years behind in what god has told you even in ministry you know that at th this is the level of anointing i should be working in this is the level of favor you you see it in your dream but when you wake up try coming and the yokes say no way you are not going we held your father oh your father was a pastor we held him till we killed him don't you think we'll let you go but the lord sent me by fire and by an anointing that in the name of jesus the son of the living god that everything sitting on anyone's destiny must drop down tonight that's how my destiny was i saw it happen to my family i saw it happen to well-meaning people i saw it happen within the territory of my growth no one could ever do anything nice today build a house at 25 and see how people will insult you where did you get money from you have started doing something that is fetish you are a demon you are this come by 21 years old and say look god has given me grace so look at the car and look at the house they will first step back and say how old are you 21 sit down something is wrong we have been so held back we don't even know what speed looks like again come promise he's been held back this is you enter your new level in ministry you are standing there enter your new level ha. customers want to come and something diverts them they don't even know why they hate you your shop is like is like mara bitter water you just carry anointing oil 
and pour it there and the demons laugh say you you think that we are stupid people and you close that shop and do a night vigil ba, 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 ba. by morning the small five minutes sleep here the demons come again to tell you you just wasted your time oh, there are mysteries in this kingdom it is not like what you are doing is wrong if you put yam in an attempt to make fried rice is yam needed for fried rice but yam is food many of us are just combining any spiritual thing blood of jesus fire fast yet this anything you must walk circumspectly there is a formula for real deliverance watch this all of a sudden this is a strong man holding this guy and all of a sudden through the greatness of thy power watch this something breaks this for 10 years and in one month this guy just runs even him he's surprised he said no 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 this is not normal why are the helpers suddenly coming where have you been i wanted to come to you once and again but satan listen i wonder where the people that blessed me today were when i was crying and said lord send me help i have loved you i thought just prayer like that is what will solve the problem ah. don't miss please don't miss this by the time we get to part three i'm going to show you the mystery of the three witnesses that on earth there are three that bear witness in heaven there are three that bear witness are we together now i will show you how to engage with spiritual intelligence many of you will be surprised i'm teaching you something that has worked in my own life and so all of a sudden you find out that your life becomes an unending wonder somebody who should not bless you just comes to bless you a door that should not open just opens as a pastor all of a sudden members start coming from everywhere they start bringing you invitation please can you come there can you come there and you are wondering whereas you can be anointed and you sit down six months nobody's placing a demand on your grace they can say man of god you are so anointed and they leave you like that oh you are such a great doctor every time good things are coming they leave you many of your uncles will come home and say hey and i just gave five people jobs you are a graduate i just remembered he didn't just forget he was made to forget because in the spirit there is something called the book of remembrance if that book is not open you will waste your time on earth i'm showing you mysteries my brother my sister if you understand what i'm teaching you you may just look a little controversial but your results will astonish you you will triumph from one level of success to the other some of you I, and I, i'm not saying you should do it but i got to a realm where god will send my account number to people in a dream people are sleeping and god is sending account number sending this blessing in koinonia 70 percent of this ministry is run and funded by people i don't know most of them mysteriously by the finger of god i would have died like a chicken with yokes upon my head imagine the captivity i would have put you inside i would have carried my yoke and curses and brought upon your life and you find out that you are coming here and your life is not moving you go to somewhere and they will tell you that guy this man of god he is the cause for your failure they are not exactly lying they are saying something that is coming from him is what is adding to your fight that's why you find out that people listen carefully look at look at what is happening are you seeing that now listen my brother my sister let me tell you this we're going to pray but I want you in this month of July, please give your destiny your attention. Just settle down. Are we together now? There are lots of imbalances in this subject. I've studied it. I will balance it for you. Many of us have gotten things. You've gotten it here and there, but there's imbalance on both sides. My assignment is to create a very sound and balanced view. But it is enough for you to know tonight that if your life is not experiencing the liberty the word of god says 
you are still in Mount Zion but you are far from your possession until there is real deliverance real deliverance I have prayed for pastors I have prayed for leaders I have prayed for individuals and I have watched their lives shift in remarkable ways I remember some years ago that's why we always pray for those getting married before they get married do you know why I pray for them it's not necessarily because maybe I'm trying to show that I'm the most anointed person it's not it's not pride at all I'm just trying to help them over 80 percent of the people are pray you see a nice wife and her husband just come oh both of you are getting married when in two weeks may God bless you okay let me pray for you I barely lift my hand and starts manifesting that's the spirit keeping quiet when you put a ring you are putting a ring for many people and the spirit will say congratulations finally you have welcomed me to your house because marriage is a covenant that's why you will find out that the man will behave well it's not that he's behaving well the spirit leaves him just go to the marriage and all of a sudden the moment you get married you will see the old him come the smoker arises again the drunkard and you turn and say i thought you were a sweetheart and the guy gives you a dirty slap it's not him he's not alone the, the, the solution is not divorce find where real power is genuine raw power and fire the apex of the power of God is shown in deliverance a dislodging of light over darkness that somebody can walk away free and all of a sudden a man that used to be a terrible man just changes I told you that nobody is intrinsically bad all these drunkards you see around all these liars there is a spirit and the spirit does not go by counseling okay let's counsel young man be nice eh? and he say yes mommy make sure you are nice don't do anything don't steal against you I will never steal you even cry you say thank you you are my boy <laughs> the spirit is outside waiting as soon as the guy comes I will show you the access points he will just step in and all of a sudden that thief wakes up in the night notice how they steal no matter where you hide it the spirit will tell them where it is they don't know it's not that the spirit speaks to them it leads them to where it is you hide money under the carpet he will just stand and look and roll the carpet he didn't just roll it the spirit are we together my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by. I used to stay in area BZ in the, the, the in Ebu there. I remember that night, the night I was tired and I was fed up. Oppression left, right, and center. I said, What is this? Every time it is night, I start becoming afraid because I and my own you see it's a terrible thing for your eyes to be open sometimes because my own I don't see visions as I'm watching you like that that's how they enter they don't knock they don't open the curtain they just come in in rows like that and there's me lying down and my goodness those spirits press me they choke me I'm shouting Jesus nothing is happening once it's evening like that do you know to a point that I don't sleep no matter how big the bed is I will lie down at the edge of the bed so that whatever happens I will try to push myself to fall I know what oppression is it's only a man that loves you that will open up his car like this and tell you the truth are you hearing what I'm telling you sometimes I can sit down I'm hearing two people talking in the physical but to wake up like it's happening to many of you once you go to bed time to wake up is a struggle you will try to wake up something is you will try and lay down you wake up physically and you can't tell anybody anything for how long will that remain don't you know that that is the administration of death i'm about to give you a job and all of a sudden you go to bed and here comes a stranger whether it's a man or a woman a boy or girl come sometimes to sleep with you you can even wake up sometimes physically and know that something has happened and you go to the same office and they say sorry leave this place a lecturer said I will help you let's look at the course you get up have you not seen this happen we are not honest enough 
that's why God will not you see it is when you are honest and open it's not an embarrassment my brother my sister if I'm not ashamed of telling you my own experience be sincere God has given me a reputation today to the body these messages are going very far if I'm looking at my ego I will not tell you what I'm telling you now I will just summarize it and round up and tell you I was always fine I'm saying this to comfort people that if the apostle you can admire today the devil did not even spare him then you better listen to what he's saying otherwise your pride will punish you again and again I'm going to be teaching you the dynamics but I remember that night I got tired and fed up I pray someone will get to that stage where you are tired and say Lord this can't continue it can't continue again I remember going to cry before God I prayed that time we used to have long tennis court I cried before God that night I said Lord you have revealed this thing about my destiny you have to help me and the Lord showed me some of the things I'll be showing you now when I found the light brothers and sisters it was raining I ran from that place I ran to BZ and I stood outside in front of my room and I begged the spirits to come I didn't cast them out I begged them to come and if you find them anywhere beg them to come if I were lying you would have seen the result in ministry because they will hijack anything that can be hijacked are we together I remember when God started talking to me about finances I told you when I was praying and all of a sudden my zinc just opened and I saw a strange being like like um, you know how a dinosaur is but the eyes one eye was like the normal human head and the tail had his own life you could disconnect it and he was looking at me with fire and with fury and he just said so you think you can bring God's people into abundance end of discussion I said so this is it this is the spirit that has held the financial destiny of territories of nations regardless of what you study regardless of what you do you will walk hard and eat like an elephant there is a force that is sitting but your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by one more time my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by i like you to pair yourselves into three find someone who is serious anybody who is not praying leave him alone pair yourselves into three 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 and you are going to for the next two or three minutes I like you to blast in tongues non-stop this month of July we are declaring war over the gates of darkness lift your voice and pray that a threefold cord cannot be easily broken pray koidonia Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Shabara to go to Shepherdate. And take a look at Tamaraka to Shabara. Lebron to Soto Pero Shabarakata. Lord, the gates must open. Lord, my destiny must be revived. My spiritual life must be revived my finances my family arise oh god of heaven my ministry is time to break forth on the left on the right Pray, pray, pray. 
Sabara Samara Kotosobesh, Lakatapakora Sadabalakash, and the Katosani Abalakos. Alléluia. 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 You are going to pray. You are still holding the hand of the person. Father, enough is enough. What kept my father? Kept my mother. Lord, I come by the mercies of God. It must break in my life. Lift your voice and cry. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, enough is enough. Enough of failure. Enough of poverty. Enough of burying my loved ones. Something has to break loose. Enough of struggling ministry. Enough of struggling my spiritual life. Pray, pray, pray. Let fire burn in this place. Let fire burn in this place. Let fire burn in this place. Pray. Shaka ta 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 ta. Raka ta 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 ta. Empre kete kete ne kotos. Pray! 
Alléluia. 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 Listen. Listen. Let this month be a month of intense prayer. Listen. Listen. Let me teach you something. When you are teaching on spiritual warfare, it is important to be extremely prayerful because you are touching the very nerve of the realm of the spirit. Listen, I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. Don't let food cheat you in this season because it's not a one-time thing that you are doing this night. I'm going to give you an assignment now. Let me tell you, this month, something must break open. I, I came angry. This mystery, understand it once and for all and be free. Hallelujah. Right. I want to give you an assignment now. Those under the anointing, just guide them. Do you believe in night prayers? Do you pray in the night? If I give you an assignment, will you do it? Anybody... <laughs> I want to I want to I want to plug you into a deep deep mystery it's not just night prayer you just listen the night time is a mystery in the realm of the spirit 24 hour is counted from night to morning not morning till night in the physical we count our day from morning to night in the realm of the spirit it is on the evening and the morning a day starts officially in the night not in the morning are we together and the second mystery you need to know is that the night time is likened to a woman who is ready to be pregnant are we together now the night time is like a woman who is ready to receive seed that's why people die in the night somebody that could survive in the day once it gets to the night they start looking at you and by night they are gone if you can be obedient to do what i'm telling you my brother my sister you'll be surprised just it won't it won't be long just 15 minutes can you do that every night huh? from this night till we finish this series who will do it 15 minutes anytime 12 o'clock one o'clock whatever just try to make sure you will see how the devil will fight you with sleep all of a sudden 11 30 you are feeling as if no matter what you need to do tell the devil you're a liar blast in tongues huh you can play one coin on your message if you want anyone at all and blast in tongues for that 15 minutes and i want you to pray are you getting what I'm saying? Cry that by the mercy of God. I know I've not taught you on the mystery of mercy. I'm going to, when I teach you on deliverance, I will now teach you on the forces of deliverance. One of it is the mystery of mercy. If mercy does not visit you, there can be deliverance. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yet the set time. Don't miss this series. But for now, I'd like you to pray don't be careless you don't have don't do it like a ritual do it with revelation this is not some occultic ritualistic thing but please i beg you in the name of the lord discipline yourself to do this and many of you will see what will happen from this night if you can just get up if you have a roommate explain to the roommate say please don't be angry if you hear me praying you don't have to pray and harass people and disturb people so that they don't arrest you but i like you to pray find a message sit down that's why god gave you a phone put all of these things please hear what i'm telling you just do it every day non-stop you can wake yourselves are we together you can wake up and wake someone else do this thing every night you won't do it forever just do it from now i promise you from now before friday even if you have been praying in the night before just do what i'm asking you to do ah! many of you the first one or two nights you will see the visions you will see those spirits will rise up with anger who is doing this who is touching a nerve 
you will see it in your dreams don't be discouraged some of you as you pray you will see dreams where they are oppressing you it's a sign that this thing you are doing is don't worry about whatever you see let me give you a side effect some of you will get up in the morning your loved ones will fight you this coming week like never before doors will seem to close don't mind it it's a reaction i'm giving you this because you will be surprised that it is by that time you'll find out that your roommate will annoy you something will annoy you. just take out time do what i'm asking you to do take your eyes away and pray my destiny lord open it up my destiny some of you will have dreams where you will be taken back to even when your parents were small and god will start showing you the movie this is it and you get up and say so this is why favor is closed are you going to do this may the grace come upon you may the grace it takes discipline but i pray that you will be charged like enough to do this do you know that was what i was doing every night i didn't know i didn't know that's what the spirit of god was doing and then light just broke and god showed me something said this is it this is it are we together so take out time pray maybe just 15 minutes god grants you grace you can push 30 minutes why not 15 minutes is fair for everybody if you are born again and you can't pray for 15 minutes something is really wrong with your spirit man no matter if you minus 15 minutes from your sleep time it shouldn't affect you at all except the spirit of slumber you see all these various spirits you have to deal with them manage yourself be wise don't go and sleep in a place that will not allow you not to pray be serious are we together those of you who are staying in the campus if god grants you grace you can walk out stroll out do so in groups because of our society now don't just sit down you have your house just pray you don't have to shout and disturb people but just do that be sensitive with your notebook be sensitive with your phone or whatever because of the extreme revelations fire will fall from heaven and God will just say this is why the five people in your family don't have children this is it then the secret was revealed unto daniel it was in a night time daniel knew why he told the king wait oh king night is coming be patient when it was night he went to pray and the secret was revealed to daniel father grant us grace in this spiritual exercise let everyone who is connected to this ministry in whatever part of the world those following the grace to be involved in this fully in the name of jesus let it be supplied to you and i pray by the power of the holy spirit that once and for all through this series god will judge the yokes that keep you and your family down forever in the name of jesus wave your hands and give jesus praise we have to close now hallelujah praise the lord let me do the altar call now I want to invite very passionately please listen let's minimize distraction I want to invite those who are saying man of God you just spoke about my family you just spoke about my life and my destiny I know first and foremost that I need Jesus my first deliverance tonight is from the power of Satan the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You are saying, man of God, I'm tired of the way my life is and I want a fresh beginning. And there are others who are saying, man of God, I once gave my heart to the Lord, but sincerely, if I'm to be honest with myself, things have gone around my life that I don't like. And if you will give me a chance, I want to make it right. I'm not going to cajole you. You don't have to come. Overflow one, two, three. I know we are busy, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I'm going to count one to five. If the Spirit of God has convicted you, leave your seat and run and come here. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. You are inside, you are outside. I'm counting one to five wherever you are. One. Let's appreciate them. People are coming. If you are coming, rush and come. One. Clear the way for them as they come. Two. The Bible says, whoever, whosoever will come to him, 
he will in no wise cast away please those coming from outside let them hurry apostle i'm not sure whether i'm born again or not i cannot sincerely say so stand up and join them three win that war tonight i can't continue like this there has to be a way out i don't want my children to ask me questions i cannot answer four if you're coming from outside please run our time is gone i count five and then i begin to pray are you running five now let me tell you something brothers and sisters god bless you keep coming i salute every one of you you see we're a family there is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of god is dealing with something here that is a most serious issue are we together and i i truly celebrate you for the courage of coming to make a decision for jesus this is a family where we love ourselves and we love you i want you to raise your right hand and say this passionately you are not reciting a poem let it come from the depth of your heart jesus is standing in this place and he's listening to you i'm only representing him please if you are joining them catch up fast so that you will start the prayer say after me passionately say lord jesus, lord jesus. say it again lord jesus tonight i come before you just as i am i declare that i don't have the power to help myself but this night i cry for your mercy i cry for your grace i declare by the authority of scripture that jesus is lord over my life I declare that you are my savior you are my king you are my lord from tonight i receive the life of god eternal life into my spirit i declare that the power to live victoriously is given to me now amen keep your hands lifted in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. I declare that you begin a journey today that will cause you to walk perpetually in victory. I declare that everything that surmounts you spiritually and otherwise, I come against it right now. The grace to walk in victory, the grace to love God with all your heart is supplied you now. In the name of Jesus, I declare you born again. I declare that you are sons and daughters of the Most High. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. There's a gentleman at your back. Um, he's, he's waving his hands. All of you just go in concert to him. Let's honor them as they go. Every one of you, God bless you. God bless you. Please clap for them. Make sure they all go. Make sure they all go. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.